Okay, Shalom. Shalom. Kwam Yasha Allah. Koholoyimla. Yahawa Bahashim Yahashai Bahashim Raka Hakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to the Akim and Akwaf. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahawa Bahashim Yahashai to the best of their ability. Jachana and the Waf just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, I wanted to touch on um, a couple of articles or basically this particular article, but I'm looking at the news in the background right here, but it's on mute. <laughs> and matter of fact, let me let me get this title real quick. It says American Society of Magical Negroes trailer sparks anger for saying white people are most dangerous animal. Right. So now check this out right here, too, as well. I'm just going to turn the camera on real quick and, and get this this portion here as well. I think ascribe more um, justice. Okay, so it says major majority of voters, 18 to 24, think Israel should be given to Hamas. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come out of that, but that, that's another lesson right there. But as you can see, now when it comes to that movie, uh, Leave the World Behind, remember everybody was upset because of the Obamas, you know, supposedly said that, you know, um, if, if something like that were to happen. Don't trust white people. So it's like everything is coming out on Esau, man. And it's beautiful, too. And this lets you know, too, that um, let me get that first, that this is the fall of this man's kingdom. And he's pissed about it, too. This is the reason why we tell you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, you know, which are Israelites. That's your biblical nationality. And these people have a perpetual hatred against you. They're going to always have a perpetual hatred against you. That's never going to change until the Lord comes because they're our enemies. You have to realize that. And one of the things that they done strategically was to make you feel as if you're one of them, as if you're safe and as if you're, you know, um, you're not a slave anymore, that, you know, you're 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 equal with them. But in the meanwhile, they running every goddamn thing still. They still over your life. They still are mandating things for you to do. You know, you, you still have to, you know, go through his rigorous, you know, things of life to just survive out here, man. So you're not free, man. But he has pushed that, that you are free in this world and you're not, man. And the Lord is is really tearing them down. And you can start to see the frustration coming from them. That's why we tell you when you go out, you know, if you can go and get your shopping and stuff like that done, you know, um, early. You know what I'm saying? You know, just go handle your business, man. Don't be out in Edomite neighborhoods, so-called white people neighborhoods late at night. When you don't have to necessarily be out, you know, like that, because those people, they got a perpetual hatred for you. And it's coming to a point where they're about to get vicious on you, man. But anyway, let me get this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 and verse 7. It's so much information, bro. Ah, it's so excited, man. We're living in exciting times, man. Um, Ecclesiasticus 25, also known as the book of Sirach. It says, there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. And a tenth I will utter with my tongue, a man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And that's what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the fall of our enemy. You're not going to tell me these people are our friends, man, when they, the shit that they done done to us for the past couple of hundred years, and they still have us in their hands to this very day. <laughs> you know? And when you go into the history of it, man, East, this man has been very fucking treacherous towards us, man. And it hasn't changed. Look, just the other day, what was it? I just done a lesson on it yesterday. Another brother done a lesson on it. They, uh, uh some, some damn Edomites burned a cross in, 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 in some Jake's yard, man. And these are those younger, um, and they wasn't even that old like that. They was like 27, 28, a man and a woman burning damn crosses in 2024 in Negro's yards. You know what that means, right? <laughs> They, they they haven't forgot they they hey, look they want what they used to have back and they're losing it too quick and they can't handle it man and, and it's not coming back but let's get some of this though and check this guy out i've seen this guy on a few um news stations before now this lady right here i'm not sure she appears to be you know what they would call asian or so-called japanese or so-called chinese or whatever the case i'm not sure what she is she could be um an israelite though but check it out oh no, no. Invite if you are a white person in Boston. And this is a, um, for educational purposes only. And you know what? Boston is a very racist place. 
Well, all of America is, though. I can't even front, man. I don't know where to start, man. Southern, Midwest, uh, Eastern, this whole shit is just a, 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 a place of treachery towards our people, man. Anyway, let's play a little bit, though. Uh, the mayor there is Michelle Wu. She's fake, uh, facing backlash over her holiday party exclusively for, for, quote, electeds of color. So her office sent an email invitation to all city council members instead of just those of color. And then the mayor later had to defend that party invite last night. Watch. Given some of the strife that exists, though, in this council, are you concerned this lends itself at all to further divisiveness? No, I mean, um, again, this is a, a, a group that has been in place for many, many years. We want to be a city where everyone's identity is embraced and that there are spaces and communities that we can help support. Okay, all right, so we embrace Tarloff and Tyrus. <laughs> <laughs> I should say, minutes later, someone from the office sent an email out. This is what it read. I want to apologize for my previous email regarding a holiday party for tomorrow. I did send that to everyone by accident. I apologize that my email may have offended or came across as so. Sorry for any confusion this may have caused. But basically, it feels like if you're white, you're not invited. <laughs> and if this happened at any company in America... What, what, what would the HR department say then? The same thing that I'm saying right now. You need to resign. Like, we, this, isn't, this, this is the most disturbing thing. Is the, the apology is for getting caught. That's the biggest, that should be the big red flag. And then when questioned on it, it was like, we want to make sure there's a safe place for everybody. Unless, of course, you're white. Because you're not welcome at a Christmas party. Your constituents are not just people of, of color. They're white people that have voted you in. But when you do this... You don't look at the consequences. If I was a white nationalist right now, I'd be saying, I told you. See, this is what happens. They are after us. All the negative stuff that you see on the extreme sides of things, this is the same thing. The only difference is because it's white people, and white people allow this BS to go down. There should, if I was a white person as her staffer, I'd quit. I'm not working for someone like that. If that happened, if, if me and Jessica had a tall people only Christmas party, you think little Gutfeld would appreciate that? <laughs> would I be invited though? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What do you Heart's think of so this? big you get to come? <laughs> um, I don't know. Tyrus. Okay, well, you get the point, you know, and, and, and it's landing real, real hard for Esau right now. Esau, see, this right here would have never, they, see, they can't believe what's happening to them. <laughs> they can't believe how dare you try and have a damn party without us and we we're not invited but here you go they got they've segregated every goddamn thing they whole thing has been segregation here you go you still got sundown towns in america man it, 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 there are literally sundown towns in america and if you're not sure what a sundown town is that's a town where when the sun go down and you a person of color Yo ass better be out of that town before the sun go down and you forfeit your life. And, and, and they're all around here. Matter of fact, where I'm at, where I live, you know, they had the movie Eight Mile, Eminem. But see, what a lot of people don't understand is Eight Mile, that was one of those barriers where if you crossed over Eight Mile, that was a sundown town. You know, we, we you better stay on, that, on, on, on the other side of um, Eight Mile, man. You got caught up out there. That was a sundown town, Eight Mile. You know, and actually it used to be a big ass wall before they, you know, it turned into like a street or whatever. So here you go. This man has been doing this forever, but he's pissed about not being invited to a goddamn Christmas party. But anyway, it's, it, it's the thing of it is just that you're seeing more and more stories of, of the so-called white man being revealed. You see, As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick before I read off into some of this story. Esau is just being revealed, man. The Lord is putting this man on blast and it's time. It's just and this lets you know that we're um we're in the end days too. This is an indicator that we're at the end, man. Second Thessalonians two and three. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And that falling away goes into the Israelites, us as a people, you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Native Americans falling off and becoming subjects to these people, basically. Now is at a point where the man of sin, the son of perdition is being revealed. So that part of the prophecy is happening. Whoso opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he is God. Sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You see, because he didn't because he didn't rule for so long. 
You got the people out here thinking that God looks like them. His son looks like them. The angels look like them. You know, got people out here all fooled that they're the righteous when in reality they're the wicked. So the, so the deception is, is, is being uncovered, man. And, and, and his skirt is being lifted up. All that shameful spewing, man, is, is coming forth on Esau. But let's read into a little bit of this. And them comments, too. You know, you know them, these Edomites are pissed. <laughs> it says, the first trailer for the American Society of Magical Negroes was slammed by many commenters after it was released on Friday. The film American so Society of Magical Negro Negroes by Focus features it is described on its website as fresh satirical comedy about a young man, Aaron, who is recruited into a secret society of magical black people who dedicate their lives to a cause of utmost importance, making white people's lives easier. Now, see that right there should have been a, you should be mad at that. But nope, you go out there to the movie and you look at it and you just thinking like, yeah, they should make our lives easier. Then when they say something in the damn movie about you. <laughs> but hey, it's all coming to light, man. It says when the affair, when the film appears to satirize, satirize the film trope of magical Negro in which an NPR summarized a black character appears in a plot solely to help a white character and then vanishes. <laughs> the trailer begins with black protagonist Aaron, who is described as uncomfortable as he walks through a room full of white people and is recruited to the secret society of African-American wizards. His tutor, Roger, explains that the premise of the society is to protect white people from discomfort in order to prevent them from doing harm to black people. <laughs> oh, man, boy. It says, what's the most dangerous animal on the planet, Roger asks? Sharks, Aaron guesses. White people, Roger reveals, when they feel uncomfortable. <laughs> white people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day, because the happier they are, the safer we are. See? And they pissed about stuff like this, man. Now, they can't take a damn joke. This is supposed to be comedy, man. Satire. But they can't take a joke. They pissed about this. Aaron then embarks on his job using magical powers to secretly help a white man because happy, a white man become happy up until they both appear in the trailer to fall in love with the same woman. And Aaron realizes that if he initiates a romance with her himself, he may face serious consequences. I've always felt like it's my job to make white people feel comfortable. And here it literally is, but maybe it shouldn't be. Aaron can be heard saying in another part of the trailer. Okay, well, anyway, I mean, hey, if you want to watch the trailer, man, watch the trailer. I'm not going to pull the trailer up. But they're mad about that line. What's the, you know, what, what, let me see what, what he say again. What's the, the worst animal? What's the most dangerous animal on the planet, Roger asks? Sharks, Aaron guesses. White people, Roger reveals. When they feel uncomfortable. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day because the happier they are, the safer we are. <laughs> oh, man. And they pissed, man. They pissed. Let's see some of the comments. This person says, in 2023, people still can't get over color of someone's skin. But you got to realize who came up with color of, 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 of people's skin. It's a social construct that, that so-called white people created because they're actually pinkish to reddish in color. They're not actually white. You know, and no one's actually black. You know what I'm saying? It's just different shades of brown people, you know, darker shades, lighter shades. But they came up with white. They came up with black. They came up with yellow and all these different things, man. Those are not nationalities. Those are not ethnicities, man. You see? So if anybody, if they talk to your people about that. We didn't come up with that shit. It says really freaking sad. Unfortunately, this sort of thing, this sort of thinking will be a contributing factor of the downfall of our society in America. No, America is already falling. And then they, they act as if we've always been together. That's my thing. It says we will be at each other's throats while the people pulling the strings sit back and enjoy the division. We need to wake up, not woke up, and come together as a nation, get over the petty bull crap. No, we're not a nation. We're not a part of America. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your people kidnapping us and bringing us here. See? That's what people need to start realizing. Start speaking the damn truth, man. We live here. 
But we're not Americans, man. We're not fucking Africans neither. We are Hebrew Israelites from our respective tribes, and you, you bastards kidnapped us. Let's just be plain. We wouldn't be here to be able to call ourselves American, man. And the Lord is starting to wake up the children of Israel, the elect of Israel, man. This person, hey, this person hit him over the head real smooth, though. I like this comment right here. Um, you could benefit from a trip to Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, and more, and more specifically Mississippi. Those places are the lands that time forgot so much so that socially they haven't progressed past the 1950s and they haven't. You think that you would, would jump into a damn time machine you go down to, go to some of these southern um, states, man. And they believe the same shit they was believing back then. And they're even more fierce about it now. It says Taylorville, Mississippi and Vitor, Texas come to mind. Those are just two sundown towns in which bad things happen to black people in 2023. I was just talking about sundown towns. Look it up. Google sundown towns. Just regular S-U-N. And, and you probably won't even have to type it all the way out. All these damn cities that the so-called white man flooded. That was prosperous so-called black people cities and stuff like that. You know, they out here jet skiing and shit over, 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 East, over Jake's um, neighborhood and shit. Right? This person says, you, you still think everyone has an even playing field. That's cute. And that's right. We don't have an even. It's never been an even playing field. And it's never going to be an even playing field. And, 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 and it's just not that way. The Lord didn't set it up that way. There's going to always be someone that's going to rule. And there's going to be someone that's going to be ruled over. And, and they, it just so happened to be their turn. So when the Lord comes, it's going to be our turn. We got next. You see? And Esau just have no idea as to what he's get, he, he has gotten himself into, but he couldn't help it anyway. I mean, you know, because it's all prophetic. It's all the way that the Lord wanted this thing to go down, and that's just that, man. Man's going of the Lord. Okay, this person says, strangely, I'm not outraged like the article tells me I should be. It's most likely because I know the media is one of the culprits pushing racial division. The other ones pushing are the politicians. Thank goodness I figured out a long time ago to think for myself. This person says, I agree. It's called independence. You support this foolery. Okay, but anyway, the Lord separated us, man. Let me see if I can find that real quick. So, okay, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. It says, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. For the Lord Jehovah's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So the Lord separated all the nations, man. He gave all the all the nations and allotted a piece of land. For all the, you know, for the, for, for them to be in and Esau, his his land is Mount Seir. But what has he done? This so-called white man, he is he has trampled over everybody's boundaries. He's in everybody's shit. He's not in his own land. That's like, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you got your own house. But you, you, you know, you, you coming and you taking over everybody else's fucking house, man. And that's Esau. But the Lord separated us, man. He didn't intend for everybody to be sitting on top of each other like how, they, how it is in America. Every damn nation is here. Damn smorgasbord of people, man. This is Babylon the Great. It's, it's, it's Babel because it's confusion, man. You got all different kinds of religions in this motherfucker. You got all different times. Everybody in this boy, man. Every country in the world is in this, in this continent. Or ethnicity or nationalities of people, rather. You know? But anyway, let me get this, though, too. This comes to mind. This Psalms. What is it? Uh, nope, not 13. Psalms 17, I think it is. Yep, verse 13. Let's start at verse 13. It says, Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. And this is Esau. The Lord created this man to be the wicked. He's playing his part. It just so happened that the Lord now is, is tearing him down. It's time for, you know, hey, he's played his part. That's just like a movie. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you got a person that comes in, you know, and he, he does his little lines and he gives off his, his performance. And then he's out. You don't see him no more in the movie. Esau is, is playing his part. His part is about to come to an end. And the curtain is about to close on his ass, man. It says, from men which are thy hand, O Yahweh, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy head treasure. They are 
full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. And that's 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 exactly what Esau does, man. But the scriptures here is clearly saying this man is the sword of the Lord. So when they said that, you know what I'm saying? What's the most dangerous animal on? You know, he he's a damn brute beast. He is the most dangerous animal on, on, on this planet, man, because nothing and nothing will survive if he continues to rule. He is he, he, he has enslaved the damn animals. You know, he got zoos all over the goddamn place, not treating the animals right. The animals looking all depressed. You know, he has enslaved the oceans. He has enslaved the, all the lands, all the people, the fruits and vegetables. Man, this motherfucker done changed up everything. And because of it, the results of it is 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 people dying. This man is is he's the he's that red horse. He was he was given the power to take peace from the earth, man, according to Revelation. So and the world is starting to see. As a matter of fact, let me let me get another one too. Let's get that Psalms 64 and 8. I mean, it's a lot of scriptures that come to mind, man. But hey, Esau, man, and we we warning you. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, these are warnings. The Lord is not allowing these particular types of things to come out. First off, the Leave, um, Leave the World Behind movie, Obama and them, they pissed about Obama and them saying, hey, if anything goes down like that, don't trust white people. That's a warning. <laughs> and then you got stuff like this right here, this movie. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, you, you can just see it. You're not to trust this man. The scripture says to never trust thine enemy. For like his iron rust, if so is his wickedness, man. This man is about to get down. And he's losing it right now. What, what, you know, he's like a big-ass fucking kid, man. Anyway, Psalm 64 and 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And and this one guy, you know, he was talking about, well, what if I was a, a white nationalist? You know, the guy that was speaking, you know, when I saw this. But we already know what, what Esau is getting down like. See, it's, it's you, Jake, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Y'all the ones, y'all going to get caught off so off guard, so cold, man, if y'all don't wake the fuck up. You're the ones that's out here believing that this man is your goddamn friend, man. This man is not your friend. He's your enemy. He has done nothing but treacherous things to you. You see? This, this is all that this man has done. And I wanted to do a lesson on, I seen another hookup earlier. I'm um, out in Texas, basically, I'm trying to think, they, they came up with a new law, I forgot what the name of the law is, you know, for the um, so-called immigrants or whatever, right? So, I think, um, you know, they, it, you know they, if they catch you, now, my thing is, with, with the law, it, it's kind of widespread, it's kind of like a broad stroke of the brush, because the law is basically for immigrants, if they pick you up and you're an immigrant, you know what I'm saying, you can get 180 days in jail, Supposedly be a misdemeanor, but if you if they take you back and you come back over here, that's 20 years in prison, man. But the thing of it is, is they can run up on anybody that looks like they're Cuban, Mexican, you know, anybody of that type of dis descent, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they can just grab your ass up until you can prove that, you know what I'm saying? You are actually a U.S. citizen. And you already know it's going to they're going to pick up a lot of Northern Kingdomers, man, off of that shit, man. I just seen that earlier. I wanted to go off into it because that's what Esau does. He write all kinds of wicked ass laws. He pushes them through. See, so y'all better wake the fuck up, man. Hey, it's getting grimy out here. And, and, and you got this new new year coming in. You got half the country still believe Trump, the president. You got the other half. You know what I'm saying? You, just this place is all chopped up. It's all kinds of division. And these people are in the comments boards keep talking about this division. They trying to divide us. Well, mother, we ain't never been a part of y'all. And that's what Jake need to wake the fuck up and realize, man. Here you go. These people on here, they mad about a damn Christmas party when Jake shouldn't be at a damn Christmas party anyway. Let these people go celebrate white Jesus, white crib, whatever the hell they going to do. Let them go and celebrate that shit, man. That's their thing. Because the scripture says that the customs of the people are vain. You ain't got no business celebrating none of that shit, man. Let these people go celebrate that stuff, man. That's what they want to get into. Let them do it. Here you go. And then, and then it, it, what, <laughs> what makes it even worse for Esau is that it's a damn so-called Chinese woman that's not inviting y'all asses to the party. What was her last name? Wu. <laughs> and then she's, she, she's got a, 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 oh man, boy. Hey, America's really falling, man. This place is through. 
Yeah, hey, they, they, hey, you can't win every championship, man. Every empire falls. And the Lord is showing us right before our very eyes. You are watching real-time prophecies come to pass, man, of the fall of our enemy. Look at that, man. Hey, that's that's the spirit right there. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where that's coming from. It's coming from one of these phones. Hey, hey, hey that, that that was the tone of the bell. I can't even that was that was the spirit right there. But anyway, I'm gonna end there. So hey, be on the lookout for Esau, man, when you out here. Like I said again, go do your shopping. Stop all that hanging out, man. You don't need to be at the bar with them. You don't need to be at the football game. You don't need to be at the basketball game. You for damn sure don't need to be at one of these baseball games. You don't need to be out here with these people, man. Just watch that shit from the house. Go get what you want to get. Cook that shit. Grill up. Whatever you want to do. Get your drinks. You can do all that from the house and do it even cheaper. And the food will be better. You're going to save a lot more money, man. You know what I'm saying? Just do all that to yourself, man. Jake got to be everywhere that Esau is at. They want to move to these fucking neighborhoods. That's like these, these the so-called um, black couple and shit. You get a damn cross burnt in your yard because you done went and moved into their neighborhood. Why the fuck are you there? No, and the scriptures talks about pity, not, um, you know, um, who will pity your charmer. No, nobody got no pity for your dumb ass and you to move into these, you know, a damn sundown town. Basically, you done moved into these people's neighborhoods and they burning crosses in your fucking yard, man. Come on, bro. Y'all got to wake up, man. These people are the enemy and they're about to get down soon. The Lord going to turn these people loose, man, in a minute, man. You want to be you need to be repenting to the father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh's side. That's the best I could tell you. Because you want some protection, man. And the only, only if you outside of that, and none of us know our lot, you know what I'm saying? But you, hey, look, your chances are 100% great with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Because at least if you die in this truth, you know what I'm saying? You know, you'll be one of the very first ones to come back in the chariot, so to speak, you know. So if I'm going out, I want to go out for the Lord. <laughs> Straight up, man. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Shola.